All right, so uh, here we are back to uh, the Master Master in Shiny uh, Club book club, and this is almost the last chapter. Security. The the, the next one is going to be performance, which is going to be uh, discussed by Angel. So, in this one, this chapter, what is called is security, right? And we we need uh, as developers, we need to make sure that our app is secure. But what what does that mean? Uh, uh, secure in terms of uh, who has permission to access it, right? You know, in terms of the, the user, you know, well, who's qualified to access it. Also, uh, internally, you know, how the data is protected. Uh, most of the companies that, uh, that I have worked for or, you know, you have some experience, uh, data right now is kind of the oil, you know, of the, of the economy. And data is is a very important aspect of the of the whole organization, so that has to be uh, you know has to be protected. And also, uh, we're going to uh, uh, delve a little bit about some of the packages that helps in developing a shiny app uh, be more secure, and also in terms also of the networking. So th there are three aspects here that you know we we want to cover. I I went a little bit beyond. You know what the chapter uh, is talking about. I believe that this is one that uh, uh, the author needs to, you know, get get up uh, up to speed or to debate because uh, there has been a lot of development in terms of uh, securing uh, shiny apps, and that's what I I, I found. So one of the things that I want to also to uh, uh, to give you some some insight is that I used uh, ChatGPT, okay, and you can see my my screen there. I use ChatGPT to develop this uh, presentation. Okay, so one of the things that I did, and it starts, you know, with the question, right? That you, you know, uh, using the chatbot, using the the the, you know, the DLLM, uh, it's kind of a question and answer. And usually, what is that, what what it helps is to give give it a, a detailed concept of what do you want LLM to answer. So I started, you know, as an experiment to see, you know, how far I could get, right? So I started as an experiment and I said, okay, I started like this. You are a shiny developer. So I'm establishing already the context, okay? You are going to look for anything that, you know, it relates to, to developing shiny apps. Create a presentation with the most relevant tools applying security to a shiny application. State the R packages necessary to deploy a Shine application with security in mind. Data security, application security, app security, and network security. And this was the product, you know, the, the first draft of the product, which has, has basically all the all the elements that are really I wanted, you know, to, to get into the presentation. So I said, okay, that's great, but now because I had to present it in a, in, a, in a specific format, I said, okay, great. Can you convert all that information that you gave me, you know, before? Can you, can you present it into a markdown document, our markdown document, okay? And, uh, you know, the, 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 the bot uh, uh, started, you know, creating this R markdown with all the topics that were you know included in the previous in the previous answer all right this took me about you know not no 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 not kidding it took me about 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> to do this okay and then at the end i said okay i have you know all the you know all the basic uh, uh information that i need for a presentation you know more or less the flow etc so the only thing that I need right now is to, if you can create or produce a visual representation of the main topics and the relationship, okay? So I was kind of, you know, uh, uh, not scared, but kind of accepted, as a, you know, accepted in, 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 in terms of what, what is it going to, you know, uh, present uh, as, as a visual representation of, because I'm not, I'm not giving you, you know, that many details. So what it did, and it was really, you know, re re really uh, revealing, 
is that because I already had set the context in R and as a shiny developer, then he created a script using the library diagram R to create a visual representation connecting all the topics that we will will be will be uh you know will, will be will be uh, presenting about okay so i mean this is good this is this is great okay i had to you know do a little bit more digging in terms of the packages because some of the packages i didn't know you know how to you know i i i've never you know, interacted with them so uh, and that was one of the things that enrich you know the 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 information that, that i received but at least with three prompts only, I created a presentation in R Markdown and I created a, a, a visual. And that's basically what I'm going to present you know, to this. And also I did the research on the on the previous groups that have, you know, talk about this uh this chapter security. And they all also have gone beyond uh, the chapter. So that's that's this is kind of my contribution to the effort, continuing effort that other book clubs are doing okay so let's see you know how how uh you know what, what what is the what is the end product here okay so let me go to the to the presentation no, that, that's really great i'm really impressed oh, yeah. you know that it was able to figure out to use diagrammer because oh, yeah <laughs> i have used it before you know uh, it's a the dot language is great, especially for example for us that we are uh, industrial engineers that we know oh it's important to communicate using diagrams, Correct. and just to have a tool as simple you know to make those representation is incredible in our end that ChatGPT was able to figure out that it was the yeah. best tool. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's it's turning point. You know that that's what it was giving. And let me tell you, this is not the latest. Uh, GPT, the GPT 4.0. This is the the 3.5. This is the the free, uh, you know, the free plan that 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 they that you use. So maybe if I use GPT 4.0, who knows, you know, what I'm going to get, you know, matter in the hands, you know, information there. Okay. I think you use GPT uh, 4.0. I see uh, your in your you go back to the application below I mean, the 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 chart. You see a little. Like a star, little stars. You have right, right here. No, at the end after ending. Oh, each part. Yeah, each answer. So you see, uh, uh right here. Oh, no, maybe in in the last one. I I saw it. in the in the last response. You see that that a uh, allowed to the bot the bots. Okay. No, Ooh. no. No, no, no. Okay, it was in Spanish. Use the veras está al lado al lado de la bocina. Ajá, yeah. No, no, no esa bocina arribita a izquierda. Okay, uh, no, I'm no, no, no. What you're saying here? Okay. See here, here. No, you were almost in the writing part, just above in the left side. In the left side. You are in the right uh, side. Left side. Okay, here. So here. Tú ves las opciones de copiar. Luego va la opción. Del, el, el, ajá. Los, um, uh, opción de copiar abajo. ¿La ves? Ajá. Uh -huh, right here. Ajá. Uh -huh, right exactly. You see the, the, the stars. Is oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, you're right. This is in 4 0. <laughs> the point is that they release that model for okay. the, the free version. The point is that you have less tokens to use, it, but you are using the model one. Right. I I thought I was using the older model, really. Yeah, okay. that's the way that you can you can you can confirm what version you are using. Oh yeah. No, but <laughs> it really, you know that you you see the output. It, it, it's really good. No, no, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really good. And one of the things is that because I'm not, you know, I haven't, you know, done this in you know in in the real world in terms of you know trying to secure a, a shiny app. Yeah. Uh, it really, you know, gave me all the tools that are out there, you know, or the main tools that are out there to, you know, attack, you know, different aspects of the security of the of the of the application. Okay. So it was kind of revealing, you know, uh the you know the the the, the information that I got from the from, from the from the bot, from the chat bot. Okay, so let's go to the presentation. Okay, and this is the this is the, the the markdown, right? Okay. Yeah. 
the markdown, you know, I told her that, you know, I, I wanted to create a presentation. So, you know, it, 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 I did the markdown with, with, uh, with the output. Uh, I, I think I chose a slide. Okay. And basically the, it, 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 it you know, create an introduction, right? Uh, what is the importance of security in China applications? Uh, the chat GPT didn't cover that, but then it gave me an idea on how to uh, cover, right? So what, you know, if, if it, even if it's not a shine application, any software application, right? You need to address uh, certain, uh, uh, you know, security aspects of any uh, software application. And one of the things, and I and I found it here in this article, it says common cybersecurity weaknesses and cybersecurity issues. Uh, let me check here. Okay, uh, what is here? Uh, Proscript, environment. Uh, let me check. You know where the article is. Uh, okay, here's the article. Okay, here we go. Okay, so according to this article. There are around 10 common cybersecurity weaknesses and, and issues uh, by, you know, by the by rank, rank by from the least uh, to the most. And one of the things that is always, you know, the, the weakest link in this, uh, you know, security for app development is what is called the human firewall, you know, and is the human element. Even though you can foolproof all your, you know, all your app, eventually the human element is going to be the one that is going to be kind of the weakest link, right? So we have to be aware of that because no software application is foolproof to be to be hacked, right? Uh, you know, any user who has access to your application is a potential, you know, it's a potential hacker, okay? So uh, apart from that, uh, you have a, a monitor network, so you have to, you know, be aware of the networking in terms of the, you know, in in Shiny, we're using a client server uh, model, so that you know information back and forth between the client and the server uh, needs to be, you know, in in most cases need to be protected and needs to be needs to be monitored. Also, the device, you know, in which devices are we running the apps, because usually. Some of the devices that we're going to be using uh, have their own, you know, security scheme, just like you know, iPhones, uh, tablets, uh, other types of uh, devices, IoT devices, etc. So you have to be also aware of that. Uh, operating systems, that's very key in terms of the network and also in terms of the app. If your operating system is prone to, uh, you know. To, to 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 attacks or to vulnerabilities within the operating system that's going to affect your application too. Uh, weak passwords, uh, non secure SSL. Uh, in fact, there's a package to you know that 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 gives you the access to secure HTTP, which is the protocol of the internet and all that. So this is the diagram that the that the that the chatbot you know, created, you know, with that diagram are, and the key areas which I gave, you know, as a prompt were the data security, application security, and network security. And this was a diagram, okay, that that it created based on the information that it already, you know, uh, given to us. So in terms of trying to secure a shared application, you have these three main areas, right? Data, application, and network. In the data security, you have to have a means to secure what is called the storage, okay? You know, the, 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 the storing of the data, how the data is going to be stored. And one of the uh, solution is to encrypt that data. Remember that uh, R uh, was not created as a general purpose uh, language. It was more created for statisticians and for you know, scientific research. So security was kind of in the, in the back in the, in the kind of in the back burner, if at all. So one of the things that we need you know, to secure some of the confidential data is by, by, uh, by, by encryption methods. Also, 
if you are dealing with a database, database, you also have to secure who has access to that to that database. Okay, you know you have to uh, uh, create some of the authentication uh, mechanisms or protocols to secure that. And we're going to see, you know, uh, uh, an example of you know how how we can do that. Then for the app security, you have user authentication, right? And you have a package called Shiny Manager that helps you, you know, uh, develop kind of the user profile of who you know can access that, and also the Shiny Server Pro, okay, which is in the Shiny Server application, how to set up a Shiny Server. Also, you can uh, monitor who has access to your uh, to your application, and you know which areas are there. Uh, do they have permission? Uh, to to access. Then, in the input validation, you had validation inputs. In other words, that uh, you know the the data that is being received for the for the client is a data that is valid. That is not you know that is not going to corrupt your you know your 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 application. Then, in the network security, you have the HTTP protocol. The HTTPS is the secure protocol and how to enable it. Right in the you know, if you are if you are uh, uh, dealing with a shiny server, you have some methodologies, you know, to enable that. Also, uh, uh, doing doing some firewalls, okay, firewall proxies. We're going to talk about reverse proxies, firewalls, etc. So this is kind of a scheme on how to you know secure any applications, not just shiny, but any applications in the different you know in 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 the different layers layers of security. Any comments there? No, that's okay. really, you know, part of the database security that was mentioned in the chat is like, mm -hmm. we need to know which user have access to which data. It's like, no, Correct. and also yep. you have, you the best application to me, just a consumption application, when mm -hmm. you read from a database, but don't exactly have writing permissions, so if somebody try to use JavaScript to, right. to manage yep. your inputs, then uh, you wouldn't, they don't have the capacity to delete the database, for example. Correct, yes. Uh, basically, you know, uh, talking about ja JavaScript, basically that's, uh, you know, that, that's one of the weakest, you know, links also in all this internet infrastructure, because before the internet, uh, you know, it was a little bit more easier. It was a little bit easier uh, to secure your database because you knew which you know persons, which entities were accessing that. But now that your data basically is open, you know, to the world, then uh, JavaScript is one of the you know main tools that uh, you know malicious uh, hackers uh, use to infiltrate. Okay, to infiltrate your your uh, your your network. Yeah. Okay? And and to do all kinds of things, you know, just you know, extract some data or put some viruses and etc. So you know, the internet has you know, open open everyone to the world, but then it has opened also those uh you know those those Super kind of security mm -hmm. uh, issues. So that's something that we have to you know we have to adapt in in in, the, in that sense. <laughs> Okay, so let's go for the data security. We talk a little bit about that, about how to secure, you know, that data in terms of using some encryption, uh, both at rest, right? You know, at the at the you know at the, at, at, at at the source and also in the transit of that data. So one of the packages that the the chatbot, the LLM, suggested was a uh, sodium. And this was really interesting. I didn't know about this package. You know, the first time that I've been introduced. I don't know if you know it, Angel. Uh, Completing but, it to me also. Okay. Yeah, but Sodium is, is an R package, okay? And what it does is that it facil facilitates the encryption uh, mechanism between, you know, the, the server and the, and, and the client, okay? So, uh, you know, here's some vignettes here. Here's the, you know, all the reference that I, you know, going to show, show they're going to be, you know, at the end of the presentation. And eventually, you know, I'm going to, you know, update the, 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 the book uh, repo, you know, to include all, all this. Uh, but yeah, but uh, just, you know, 
an example of how to encrypt your data is using this library, right? Uh, generating a key, which is going to be the key that is going to encrypt. Is is you know you you need that key in order to encrypt uh you know your data. Then you use that you know uh that that key as a you know with a plain text with a you know example a, a mockup uh script of a plain text and then you write it down. So this is secure data bin is an, an encrypted version of your data, but it's going to need this package and it's going to need that key, you know, to access it. Okay. Uh, something like, uh, you know, for, for the email, when you encrypt the email that you generate a key, but then you have to provide the, you know, like a public key to the, you know, to the end user. So he can then decrypt that, that information. Okay, you know it works something like that, and also yeah. another package called Open SSL that you know uh, does a, a, a similar mechanism. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just like the movie Enigma. Uh, called, right. Uh, yeah. So you, yep. you you just say uh, encrypted data. That that's amazing. Exactly. That yeah. That yeah. And it's something that uh, usually I don't see. You know, in implementations, maybe something that is. You know, uh, working under 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 the hood. Uh, for example, I know that Dropbox, Dropbox, uh, encrypts your data automatically. You know, when when you use Dropbox, your data is encrypted. So the the only way that you can, you know, decrypt your data, is is with a key, and those keys usually are you know kind of in the background. You know, you, you don't have access to those keys. Okay, and supposedly supposedly the you know the dropbox you know uh that people also don't don't have access to, to those keys it's it's all kind of uh, uh you know automated uh you know on under that that framework that you know that's kind of you know i i, I, I could you know explain it to you so database security well in the database security what you need to do is to have some form of authentication right so that if uh, you know if uh, if a connection is coming you know from somewhere that you have certain credentials from that connection that is going to give you access to that database and the example the chatbot used was how to connect securely to a postgres uh, sql uh, database okay and i've used this not with a password but i have used you know this db connection uh, for a generic uh, one so if I have a password there and the password is going to be stored here in an environmental variable that Postgres SQL uh, creates, when you create your database, you have the option to create a password, right? So that password is going to be uh, created as an environmental variable that could be accessed, you know, uh, technically could be accessed within your operating system. That's why you know, also your operating system has to have some mechanism to try to conceal that or to encrypt that, you know, uh, password, right? Because then, you know, if you know the location, then you just have to go there and, and retrieve it, and then you can have access to the to the database. If you have access to the right. operations uh, operating system. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that that's why security, you know, in the in the chapter is kind of a teamwork uh you know aspect because there are a lot of uh you know a lot of uh gears, a lot of uh uh dials that each person in the organization has to be aware, you know, and, and their role in it. In terms of, you know, securing the operating system, securing applications, securing the network, and all that. And Shiny is going to be, you know, uh, running on top of all that, you know, a stack of, of applications. All right. So that's basically uh, security storage. Uh, I was really, you know, very interested in that uh, sodium. <laughs> Uh, package, which, you know, it, it was the first time that I was introduced to it. Okay. All right. So application uh, security. So you want a mechanism to authenticate, you know, who has access to, and once they have access, you know, what they can access within, right, the Shiny app. So one of the things that the, the chatbot suggested was to use a Shiny Manager. And this is the, let me see if I have here. Okay, this is DBI. Okay, this is Chani Manager, right? 
So Shani Manager is a library to help you, you know, secure authentication mechanisms for single uh, Shani apps, okay? And what it does is something similar, you know, at least what, what, I, what I read, something similar to what the database uh, credentials, you know, uh, framework does, but within the Shiny uh, application. So it provides kind of another layer of, uh, of, of security. So here with this uh, library, you can create a data frame of credentials, right? And in terms of which are the users that are going to be uh, using this, user one, user two, and so forth. Then in the password, you can have the passwords, but then you can use the sodium to encrypt those passwords, right? Okay. So now, you know, we're, we're, we're getting somewhere because the password is not only, you know, encrypted, but it's going to be, you know, if it's encrypted, it's going to be secure. And then you can use those credentials, right? With this, you know, uh, uh, kind of secure app, secure server uh, to check the credentials to see if that user has the right password, you know, the, the, the right, the right uh, you know, information to access your, your app, okay? The other side of this is that there can be some, you know, attacks, not only from the, from the front end, you know, in terms of the user authentication, but in, ter in terms of something called SQL injection and access attacks. I never seen this, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, terminology. Okay. So I had to, I had to dig in a little bit of what is a SQL injection, you know, attack, et cetera. So I put some, you know, links here uh, to give you an idea of, of what, what it was. And what it was is that the SQL injection attack consists of inserting or injecting on a SQL query via the input data from the client to the application. In other words, once you have some access, then you're using a SQL query to try to inject a malicious code. All right, and that's something that you can at least you know try to fend off with some packages uh, from R, like validate and also HTML tools. The example that the chatbot provided was with the validate uh, package, okay? And the validate package, let me see if I have it somewhere here. Uh, shiny, okay, I have it here. Uh, it's called the Data Validation uh, Cookbook. It tells you, you know, everything that the that the validate package uh, does, okay, in that in the link. So what it does is that when the data is coming, right, is 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 is, is, is coming to the to the shiny app, I uh, use you, you can set uh, certain rules in terms of you know it, it looks like a test, right? In terms of you know, okay, if if something is coming with with, with the age, you know, let's say that you're querying the age. Of a you know of, of 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 a customer, so the age has to be within a certain parameters. It cannot be a negative number. It cannot be a number greater than one twenty. So it has to be somewhere in there. Okay, in this example, then you you know access the the the, the piece of information here age within the data frame, and then you validate with the rules. And if the rules, you know. Uh, you do, if you don't conform to the rules, then you are going to get some kind of uh, you know uh, message or some kind of log. Okay, let me see. Uh huh. Yeah, I I, okay. I use yes. that package uh, daily. Yeah, so I Highly validate. Uh, okay, good. Yes. So I, I ended creating a a simple uh, package just to grab. One of the steps because to me, use uh -huh. validate, validate or then confirm. Uh, it's kind of hard when you meet, you need to do it many times. Right. So I try to just create a few functions to to help me with that workflow. And okay, I'm, good. I'm kind of impressive, you know, that they suggest validate. Uh -huh. I like it because it's a, a lightweight package. It doesn't have many dependencies. Right. And it was really well. Um but I know I have more we have more options, more like report ready, 
uh, like assert R, we have also, uh, I, it's something like point because that's the true from positive. And we also have one tool that's more related to shiny apps, but I like that they use validate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and as I tell you, you know, it's, it's something that I, I wasn't aware that there was, you know, a package, you know, that, that does this. Usually I will go, you know, like, you know, coding, you know, the, if, the coding, the coding route. <laughs> if, if, if else, stop, if not. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, yeah do, do, do like a log login, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, routine. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the chatbot, re uh, you know, uh, mentioned this uh, XSS, which is cross uh, scripting. And this is kind of, uh, you, you, you know, you know, you know what, 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 what this is. Uh, I know to me that there is new, you know, the uh, SS. That, that's yeah. new also for me. Yeah. Um. Let me show you, okay? Because you, you, you should be aware of you know what's going on, which is a cross site uh, scripting. Yeah. That, that 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 that's what it is. And what happens here is that let me see if I can show you the diagram that I found. Okay. Yeah. This is this is the diagram. Okay, what what is uh, cross site script, uh, scripting? And uh, what what happens is that usually the cross site scripting is to you know the, the the there's an attack, but you you're not aware of it in terms of a link that usually is you know inserted into your system. Uh, it could be via email, right, or via you know or other 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 tools you know for for networking. And what it does is that it redirects you in that, let's say that email, you know, with a phishing uh, scheme, uh, it redirects you to a website that they can then manipulate, okay? So uh, one of the things that you should be aware of your, you know, a shiny app is if it's, you know, uh, retrieving information from any other website, you have to make sure that that, that website is not prone to attacks. Okay, because if that website is prone to attacks, then it could, you know, it could it could reflect on on your on on your app. It could be a way to get into your app. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, I mean, this is a this is a, a, a new world, you know, in terms of you know data engineering, uh, network security, etc. But at least you have, you know, tools within the R ecosystem that you can use to try to, you know, make it more robust, your application. I mean, you know, like I said at the, at the beginning, any application is prone to, 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 to a security, you know, security attack. And it's because of the human element. You know, eventually uh, humans are going to interact with your app and depending on that interaction, uh, you could get, you know, uh, your application could get uh, the hack. Okay, so in the network security, uh, the first recommendation for the chatbot was that you have to enable the HTTPS, which is kind of something that is is very common. You know, nowadays, if you look at the, you know, for example, if you if if you go to the, you know, to to your browser, uh, you can see right, you can see right there in this uh in this website where I'm 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 getting that uh, XSS explanation. You see that they're using the the protocol HTTPS. I think that it's very rare to today that no that you know there's still sites that use the common HTTP, which is the unsecure one. So in that sense, we should be reminded that when you are setting up your Sunny server, that you you know activate the you know the the security layer, and this is the 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 script that the chatbot you know suggested. In terms of you know setting up your your shiny uh, server in the configuration you know uh, parameters, okay, and then also doing the firewall, which is rules to you know try to restrict access uh, to your you know to your network. Uh, this is an example of what is called an NGANX configuration uh, for the shiny server, and this is the script. Uh, I never done it. Okay, and I, I, I never set up a, a shiny server and all that, but I know that, for example, if you use uh, the deposit, you know, uh, sites, uh, for example, you know, the deposit connect and all that, 
I know that there is some templates that you can use to set up your your security, and probably, you know, but I'm 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 just you know as assuming that probably within under the hood, they are you know uh act activating some of these you know uh, parameters internally. So then your Shine application, if you activate the security layer, then you will have all this you know uh, uh protection to it. I think this is more more important when you are creating mm -hmm. the server from the scratch. For example, you go to AWS, right. but in the in the case of posit pro uh, products, I think they take mm -hmm. care of that part. Yeah, ah, but they, but they still, for example, I remember when I was deploying, like let's say the a machine learning model, okay, uh, using using the their you know the their their their, their infrastructure. Uh, there was an option in terms of if you want to activate, if you want to restrict users, if you want to, you know, set up the the HTTP, TPS, etc. So it's kind of an option. It's not something that is going is is coming just as the default, because it it it, it depends on the legality, right? The legality of the, you know, of of you of using the tools that you have that option that is not a force to you. Okay. Okay, great. but 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 it's good practice always, you know, to set up some kind of a security layer, especially if it is something that is interacting with uh, confidential data, you know, from from an organization. Okay. Um. So the the other aspect here, and it was you know also interesting, is that uh, in terms of the security, the network security, there's also what is called a monitoring and uh, logging. So, for example, if you have uh, users that, you know, that have permission to use your uh, app, you need to keep track of them, okay, in terms of what they are doing. Because, uh, 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 you know, uh, going back to the, to, the, to, the, to the weakest link, the human uh, aspect is one of the weakest links. So you cannot assume that everyone is using your app in a benign way, okay? You have to be kind of uh, skeptical here. So one of the things that you can do to track, you know, the, the, the user activity and logs is to use this package called Shiny Logs, okay? And it's, let me see if it's, uh, I think it's right here. Yeah, this is the package, okay? And what it does is that it, it creates a logging uh, environment so that you can track, you know, every, you know, every, every, every move, every, 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 everything that the user is doing within your app. All right, and this is an example. For example, of using the shiny logs, track usage, right? Storage mode, and then uh, the store JSON. What it's going to do is that those logs are going to be stored in a JSON file that then you can retrieve and you know uh, do some some analysis like any other you know any any other file. And for some alerts and monitoring, you have this package called Prometheus and also Grafana. Uh, Prometheus was really interesting. Okay, this is not the script that the chat bug, you know, gave me. The chat bug gave me a very, you know, uh, simple script. But this script, I took it from the from their website. Okay, so the Prometheus, what it's going to do is that it's going to give you some performance um, metrics. And also, you have the ability to set up some alerts. So this is, you know, kind of a template also of what your shiny app could look uh, using, right? After the, you know, after the app, right? The, the, the app instantiation, uh, you can use Prometheus to, you know, call the app, the shiny app, and then uh, call a registry, okay? Which is this part of the, of the code that is going to be collecting those, like, like the shiny logs, is going to be collecting all the information that, that, uh, that uh, the users are are generating with the app. Okay, let me see if I have let me see if I have you know something here. Yeah, uh, shiny logs. Okay, this is the the GitHub for the Prometheus. As you can see, the artist in capital case. Okay, Prometheus, and this is the script. Okay, that I took you know there from the uh from 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 the example that the chat bot you know gave. And also, you can use it in conjunction with uh, uh with with Plumber, apparently. 
Okay. All right. So what are some of the conclusions? Well, uh, we uh, did some investigation using uh, uh, you know, the, the tool of ChatGPT to try to get a glimpse of how we can secure our Shiny app in this, you know, uh, different layers, the data layer, the application layer, and the networking layer. And also, it's, it's good to get acquainted with some of the R packages that are already built in the R ecosystem to enhance the Shiny application security. In other words, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are some packages that can do it right out of the get-go, and I've shown you a couple of them. And these are the references for for uh, future, you know, for future future use. Okay. So that's oh, this it. is amazing. Yeah.